Before we move on to what is in store for you in this particular session, let's take a quick recap. This is a case study for event designing. And this is the brief. Basically, it was a dealer event for a switch brand. It is an Indian switch brand and they wanted to take the dealers or the people who sell or who make the best sales of the company and they wanted to reward them. They wanted to reward the people who had done really well for that particular year. And how they were going to reward them? By having a reward and recognition night called an R&R &R event in Japan. We also saw how we arrived at the main theme using word mapping. We got the words switch on, power and light. And do you remember what these words gave us as the central theme? Yes, the central theme was called the rising sun's switch on the shine because it was all about light, power and ultimately it was about switching on the inner shine of the employees. And then moving on, how did we crack the visual theme? How did we know that what we need to do to depict the theme visually? So if you remember, this is the crimson disc of the Japanese flag. And we use this crimson disc as a main visual element based on which all the other visual elements or the collaterals would be created. We use this because it depicted Japan as a land of the rising sun. And then moving on, we saw that how the flag, how the crimson disc was used to create different elements. Okay, for example, the invitations and the collaterals, the branding, everything was used using the red crimson disc. This is how we took the creative route ahead. And you must remember that we must always connect everything back to the central theme that is the rising sun switch on the shine and now i will tell you how we design the entire event do you know what are emojis okay emojis are nothing but it is a word which means pictograph and in japanese it's called an emoji which means a picture and a character Okay, so net net emojis were actually invented by Japan and we use these a lot in WhatsApp and all other communication, all our social media, all these smileys that you see, these are like emoticons what we call them. But did you know that they have a Japanese root? So what we did, what we suggested is that, that let's have the e-invitations or the email invitations with emojis and it was supposed to be a teaser. A teaser is something, it's a, it's a like, it's a communication to create some kind of excitement. You don't reveal the theme or you don't reveal everything about the event, but you just get the uh, curiosity peaked, the interest peaked of the audience. That's what a teaser does. Hmm? So what we did was we suggested that you have e-invites with emojis, but the emojis will be customized as a red discs. If you remember the red discs of the flag, we had suggested as a creative visual communication. So also they would use that in the emojis. And the creative uh, invitation would be something like this. So we would give an emoji picture which would depict a word and we would keep this blank. So this depicted a particular word. Dash to the annual MCA conference. Okay, so this was a teaser. And people had to guess what the word was. Can you guess what the word is from this emoji? I'll tell you later. The second teaser was, we are dash to invite you to the land of the rising what? We are dash, we are happy yeah, to invite you to the land of the rising sun. And rise then like the dash and switch on the inner shine. What would this be? Yes, so rise then like the sun. Okay, so this was the concept and it was designed in uh, a fashion which people could understand and which they could participate in, like in a quiz. So welcome to the annual MCA conference. We are happy to invite you and rise like the sun and switch on the inner shine. Okay, so somewhere here again, the theme has come out. 
because people should know what this theme is all about and what the event is all about. And it needs to come right from the time you design your teasers. The next were the video invitations. Okay. Now, what did we do for video invitations? Now, you have heard of something called origami. Origami is a Japanese way of folding paper to make something useful. Okay. So what we did was we created a video invitation in the form of origami. Or there is a special effect called origami and we created the invitation based on that. Again, because it had a Japanese connect. Then we shared an itinerary with them. It was an interactive PDF, means it was hyperlinked to different elements and it told them what they were going to do over the next two or three days that they were going to be in Japan. Okay, now what did we do? Again, we added a lot of Japanese element. Like this sentence, Toshu Gobushimi, means bon voyage. Then it also included useful tips of links and videos which had 20 travel phrases in Japanese because they were going to Japan for the first time. Obviously, they will not know Japanese. So in this particular itinerary, we also gave them some video links or we gave them some uh, elements or the phrases which are popular in Japan, like hello, good morning, goodbye, which would be useful for them when they travel. To the world. So all these elements you have to think of when you're taking this whole group of people and you also have to make sure that it is connected back to the to the central theme, that's right. Now these were some examples of the pre-event communication. So did you see how we managed to integrate the theme of Japan and Shine in all the pre-event communication? Now, before that, a quick tip. If you remember, we had also seen a video of an event which an event company had done in Bangkok. And when they took them to Bangkok, there were a lot of high elements, a lot of uh, local dances and a lot of cultural elements that were uh, present there to entertain the audience. Okay. So similarly, uh, as I have said that you take a lot of uh, ideas or inspiration from the destination that you're going to. And our destination was Japan. So we are going to take a lot of cultural elements of Japan in this particular event. And you will soon see how. Okay. Now, the journey begins from the time your guests step out of the airport. Okay? Once they are out of the airport in Japan, specifically Tokyo, because they were, uh, they were taken to Tokyo, there will be a bus transfer. Obviously, there will be a vehicle to take them from the airport to the hotel. So what did we do at the bus uh, transfer? If you know that uh, Japan has this special tree called cherry blossom tree, which comes only in a particular season. It's beautiful because the entire cities have these trees and it's all blossoming with pink little flowers and in the season it looks absolutely stunning so you can google up japan cherry blossom and you will see what i'm talking about but because cherry blossoms are very japanese uh, we welcome them with a little bouquet of these flowers with a message konnichiwa to tokyo and keep shining like the cherry blossoms so if you notice again we have brought the shine element in the communication. Going forth, what we also did was we organized a very Japanese welcome, a very Tokyo welcome for the audiences. So what did we do in the bus with them? Now, once they are in the bus, they've come, you know, uh, from a very long journey. They want to just relax and they just want to, uh, you know, kind of look around and see what the city is like as they are driving to the hotel. And what was the best way to relax them? So we took a shakuhachi flautist, you know, somebody who plays a flute and it was a traditional Japanese flute made from this uh, uh, bamboo, the special bamboo which is found in Japan. And he was playing these melodious tunes to relax them. So again, a very Japanese cultural element we brought in. And once... <clears throat> once they came to the hotel, we gave them very traditional Japanese hospitality. So if you see all these women, they're wearing the traditional Japanese attire. Do you know what they are called? That's right. They are called the kimonos. And they are typically worn especially by women. 
Then, of course, when uh, the guests come in to their rooms, then you would again want to give them some kind of a surprise element, which is again centered around the theme or the location. So we had suggested these wine uh, wine bottle covers, which are these little kimonos, or you know, this is especially for the men. And then we had these Japanese fans, which are again very popular for the women. So this was a nice little uh, welcome, uh, as in the form of room drops for the guests. Okay. Now, as soon as they arrived, of course, they relax and they kind of unpacked and they, uh, you know, kind of settled in. And after that, we had suggested that they, on day one, they didn't have anything else to do, you know. So they have just come from a long trip and just want to unwind. But we wanted to start giving them a lot of experiences right from day one. So what did we do was we organized a special Japanese tea ceremony where they created a ryokan. Okay, so the ryokan is a traditional Japanese tea room. And it is a Japanese custom, you know, if you have seen in some movies or anywhere, or if you see some videos, they have a special way of serving tea. Uh, okay, and it is very traditional and there is a meaning behind all of this. So just like in India, uh, you know, we have a lot of meaning behind our cultures and our traditions. So also Japanese, as I said earlier, is also a very uh, rooted traditionally and everything that they do have a very deep meaning. So you can probably look up the Ryokan and see how the Japanese tea ceremony is served and maybe you can try it at home someday. So this is what a typical Ryokan looks like. And we tried and we recreated this experience for them. And other uh, hotel experiences we give them was a photography workshop because if you know, again, in Japan, uh, you know, there are a lot of, uh, it's very well known for photography. Uh, you know, some of the biggest camera uh, brands come from Japan, like Nikon, There's Sushi and the Sun. So again, we connected it to Japanese. Okay, it was an authentic cooking experience. Then the Kanji writing workshop. Kanji means the Japanese font, like a Japanese calligraphy. And we had uh, suggested a Kanji writing workshop for them. And fortune cookies. So, you know, so all Japanese traditional elements, uh, we were trying to give them to create that memorable experience that they wanted. Now, on the second day, they had a major gala night. When you say gala night, what does it mean? It means the main celebration. The main celebration of what? Now, if you remember that this is an R&R &R event, means a rewards and recognition event, which means that it's going to be an award function. And award functions are very important. Now, do you also know that the award functions themselves have a separate theme? Yes. Gala nights are supposed to have a completely different theme. And when I say different, it's connected to the central theme. But again, they're different from the main theme. They cannot be the same um, traditional Japanese theme, but it needed to connect with the shine element. Okay? So how did we do that? How did we again think of a new theme within the main theme? That again is very challenging, but it can also be a lot of fun when you get a hang of it. So let's see what we did for the gala night. Any guesses before that? Just think that this is all about switch on the shine. This is Japan. And again, we had a reward and recognition means they had to shine. They had to switch on the inner shine. So any guesses when you put all these idea dots together, what would come to your mind? What would you have done for the gala night? Right now, maybe you have a hang of how to ideate. So let's see if you have uh, some thoughts in your head. Write them down and let's see if they match to what we did. Maybe it does. <laughs> now, whenever you are explaining anything, explain with a laddering. Laddering means a step-by-step -step rational explanation. Okay. Now, this is the laddering for the gala night theme. Now, other cities of the world, like, you know, Bombay, they are called the concrete jungles. Agree? Because you're made of uh, your know, buildings all around, a lot of buildings and cement concrete and construction happening all the time. But Tokyo is actually called the electric jungle and not the concrete jungle. And do you know why? Let's see. Okay. Now, if you have ever been to Tokyo or if you have not, if you look up Google and see images of Tokyo, it looks something like this. You know, there are these typical streets in Tokyo which are completely... LED lights and very kaleidoscopic, very colorful, very bright. And what does it remind you of? <clears throat> what does it remind you of? It reminds you of the theme switch on the shine. 
okay because it's all about lights and shine and it's all about switches okay so light shine switch it on it give us a theme electrifying tokyo doesn't it connect back to the theme of switch on the shine anyway if you haven't got it let's look at the connect again when the sun goes down in the night tokyo switches on its shine so it becomes like this bright and beautiful okay and this is exactly what our dealer and brands are about they are electrifying okay they are so vivacious so energetic so colorful so electrifying so we are trying to draw parallels between our dealers and tokyo and there is the common connect is all about shine and lights and bright okay so this is the space that we are moving around which is connected to the central theme yet it is different from the traditional and overall theme so it's a subset of the main central theme and this is again very uh, exciting and very challenging but once you crack it it's a lot of fun okay now we got electrifying tokyo as a theme for the scala night and what did we do with it how did we design the event around this theme okay so we gave an overview that it will be a grand brilliant means full of lights and colors uh, it will be a brilliant evening of celebration of lights the shine and the snazz of modernism of japanese inventions okay so this was going to be a very modern look at the japanese uh, uh, style of life if you see on day one it was more traditional and if you remember we had given this overview that this theme is going to be a mix of both contemporary japan or new japan the modern japan and the traditional japan okay so the gala night was more about the modern japan you know the more electrical and the more jazz and the more neon and more led lights which uh, connected back to a theme of shine now again if you have thought if you thought that just having invitations for the main event was enough no it's not there is more communication coming in the gala night as well so for the gala night again you have to give invitations now uh, we've already done something very uh, japanese for uh, you know the main uh, event but uh, what did we do for the gala night now if you know that there is a typical uh, uh, you know if you watch a channel like cartoon network uh, you know there are these characters which are japanese cartoon characters and they have a very typical style of animation which is called manga so manga is a japanese comic style and most of these stories are all about heroism you know so you will have two or three friends and all these uh, young uh, people young characters and they always fighting evil and trying to win over them okay so it's all about heroes and it's a very typical uh, style in uh, japan okay so we had uh, suggested that uh, the invitation the gala night would be a manga style japanese comic book okay and this comic will talk about the heroisms of a dealers so again it's it's not manga for the heck of doing manga but manga is uh, all about heroic stories so we wanted our heroes our, our dealers to feel special right so we asked them okay now switch on the shine because you are the heroes of this switch brand okay so there was again an instant connect that's why we suggested this theme okay now when they walk in we would give them a japanese lantern because again there is a reason behind it that there would be an activity with this lantern when they move on so you have to start visualizing that uh, and taking the client through you know you have to give a walk through that once the uh, people come once the attendees come what will happen what will they see what will the venue look like what will be the little experiential things that they are going to uh, experience over there <clears throat> also you have to keep in mind that the client is not looking for all the integrity but quite a lot of details and if they have asked for anything special don't forget to give it to them and the, as i always keep saying the devil is in details so the more you think the more detailed you make it you know the more the chances of you winning the pitch okay now this is how you bring the theme alive in terms of design we do not have actual stage uh, designs over here but if you can visualize the venue would be decorated around the theme of bright led lights and you know neon lights this very much like the tokyo at night kind of a thing the images which i showed you earlier which will give this whole colorful bright electrifying look to the event okay now uh, for example when they walk in uh we have given this concept uh, we had given this concept of a neon uh, tunnel okay so all neon lights uh, you know sometimes when you go for a wedding or something they make a, a tunnel of uh, 
make a channel or like a coverage or a, you know like a cover of flowers or cover of the pattas uh, very colorful very bright they do just like an entry so we try to make the entry very special and we said that this is like a tri- time travel so now you're going to the future japan okay the very modern japan so that that is how we played with it it's not that suddenly you come and you find yourself in front of electrifying tokyo no from contemporary you're moving to the modern tokyo and then all this modernity starts at the entrance tunnel okay so when they come uh, we had these little little experiences like there's something called uh, drummers you know these neon style drummers so they wear these very bright clothes and drumming is very important in uh, japan you know so they also have uh, uh, drumming you know big big those big japanese drums during weddings or festivals so here we had these robot drummers uh, again uh, which were very bright and very shiny Okay. Now, uh, usually for team events uh, like these, so they like to have photo ops, so they like to have places where you know people can click the selfies. So what we had suggested again, we take the manga studio, a live manga studio, where you have an artist. So all the people who are there, they will stand in front of him, and he will create the whole. Uh, caricature and manga style of the person and then you put them all together in a colorful way and you make it a photo op you know so all this will be happening very quickly and live and everything will be very digital so this will become a great photo op for them so it is experiences like this which add to the event then the giveaway so usually uh, you know you have souvenirs in the end but we suggested that we have souvenirs in the beginning and it's not that you just give them the bags when they come okay they had to play a virtual game because again this was all about technology it's modern japan so they had to play a game like you know how you play the ring game the ring toss game in the mela so they had to have this uh, glass this uh, vr in uh, on their eyes and they would be able to see the different different gifts over there and they had to just toss the ring and if they win it then they get it then the stage design so the stage design would somewhat depict you know the rising sun and it would definitely have more red and it wouldn't be blue like this but as i said we're not allowed to uh, share the stage design there but this is just to give you an idea that how you connect even the stage to the theme okay so it will be a depiction of the tokyo's animated district depicting the rising suns then you would have certain entertainment elements like the geisha dance the geisha is a very modern uh, sorry it's a very popular uh, japanese dance if you've heard of the memoirs of uh, geisha it's uh, basically uh, you know women used to entertain uh, men in those times but uh, now it is more of a folk uh, thing more popular culture so uh, in las vegas there is something called a geisha fashion show so you know people dress up as geishas and they have a fashion show again which is a lot of lights and so, and again it's got a lot of japan in it so we had suggested this entertainment option okay now uh, again uh, you know for these kind of events our clients really like it when all the people come together the employees come together and they do something very memorable you know as a team as one so if you remember we had suggested that uh, the guests should be given a lantern when they enter now why did we suggest that we suggested that for the lantern ritual okay now uh, i'm sure you all are aware uh, of you know a lot of these lantern or lamp lighting ceremonies which uh, kind of uh, symbolize togetherness or they symbolize pride so we had this lantern ritual it was symbolic to switch on the shine because lantern you have to light the lamp or you have to light the lantern and that means it is you are bringing forth your inner shine so it was very symbolic and it went very well with the theme and it would be used for a group activity when they would switch on the lantern and pledge that they would keep the company running or it was a promise that they made or dedication that uh, the uh, these uh, dealers made that they would make sure that the uh, fortunes of the company stay bright so these kind of elements really the clients like when you suggest and uh, these can actually uh, you know kind of get you in the consideration set of the clients okay now going forth in the gala night some event obviously it's a gala night so it will have entertainment and if you remember the client had said that he wanted some uh, celebrity singer they wanted some musicians or they wanted some popular singers from india so we had suggested some options to them uh, based on the budget that they had okay and after the entertainment we had suggested that we can have 
something like a neon parade. So if you have been to Disneyland or even if you have not, you can look it up. Uh, and in the end of every, uh, you know, when Disneyland is about to close, they have an LED parade where all these characters of Disneyland are actually lit in these bright LED costumes. And it's beautiful. It's amazing. And it's unbelievably um, bright and electrifying, you know. So if you've never been there, uh, see if you can make a trip someday. If you think that uh, you're not going to be able to make, please see some videos. Uh, it is something which is not worth missing, you know. Even if you're an adult, you will love it. Okay, so it uh, had, has people with uh, costumes like this. So we had suggested that you could do uh, a parade, uh, a Disneyland-like parade, because you know, there's a Disneyland in Tokyo as well. So uh, this was how we had suggested that uh, the event will uh, go on. And this is how we had brought all the elements. And this is how we had designed, we had uh, uh, you know, uh, shared ideas of how you can bring the event alive from the concept to the design aspect. So I hope you have kind of got a fair idea on how you can bring the central theme, design it in such a way that it fits back into the central idea. And at the same time, it uh, gives your uh, guests a memorable experience and it fulfills the client's requirements. Okay. So this was a case study that I wanted to share with you. I hope you have now understood step by step how we have started making associations, joining the dots to crack the theme. Then we applied these ideation techniques like a word mapping and then we cracked the theme. So step by step, I have shown all this to you. And in this session, I showed you that once we crack the theme, then how it develops into an event design completely. Okay. An event design consists of all the elements of uh, the event, all the experiences, all the visuals, all the communication, all the branding, all of that is a part of the event design. All right. So uh, this was just an example. And of course, every event is different and every event has its own style of design and its own requirements. Okay. But how do you fit it back into the central theme is something which I just explained to you. So the next time you are visualizing or designing an event, think of an event concept and then develop your concept note based on that. And that brings us to the end of this session and also the module. So let's quickly recap what we have done in the past few sessions before we complete the module. So we spoke about event design and conceptualization, wherein we learned about event ideation and the creative ideation techniques and how to apply them. We also spoke about how to crack a brief which the client gives so that you know or understand what the client wants. We also saw that once you have the brief, what kind of ideas you can create and how to create the central theme. I also explained that once you get the central theme, how do you develop it completely into an event design? An event design means a complete concept or the experience of the event which is based on the central theme or the idea. And once you do that, then you get all the elements of the event to make it a success. I also spoke about two case studies. One was the wizard theme, one was the Egyptian secret eye theme and one was a Japanese theme. So I hope that all these case studies helped you understand how conceptualization works and how even designing is done based on the concept. So before we end, I would like to leave you with a little video which I have used from YouTube. This is from the travel company Homoscope and they had created some experiences for the people who were traveling with them. Just to give you an idea that how experiences are important when you are designing an event and how you can make every event memorable with these unique experiences. So all the best and I really hope you enjoy your career in event management. Hope to see you sometime and please share your feedback about this session. My name is Abhinash. I am delighted to welcome you all. So without much ado, please welcome Mr. Baman Irani! Hello! Hello everyone! And now, the end is near And so I face the final curtain
my friends I'll say it clear I'll state my case of which I am certain I've lived a life that's full I've traveled each and every highway and more much more than this I did it my way Please put your hands together and please welcome Chef Ranveer Ra Come on let's see a nice warm welcome And that everybody are the awards. Na 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 everybody. The idea is uh, comes from Thomas Cook that they obviously care so much for the people who travel with them. They're not just their customers; they mean so much to them, and that is why they made this wonderful.